The Christmas Pawnee It was nearly Christmas time. Diana looked at her list of presents. Had she remembered everyone? Mummy, Daddy, Auntie, Uncle, Granny, Grandpa, Cook, my teacher, the boy next door, a dog, a cat, and of course my darling pony Nibs, she said. Yes, I've got something for every single one of them. She loved Nibs, her pony, very, very much. He was small but very strong and galloped like the wind. She'd been saving up for a very long time to buy him a horse rug for Christmas, but still she hadn't nearly enough money. She was sad about that. I'll just have to buy him something small for Christmas. A bunch of carrots or something, she thought. I must keep all the money I've saved for him until I've got enough for this rug. Oh dear, it's such cold weather and I'd like him to have a rug over him. I'll just have to make do with the old blanket Mummy gave me. On Christmas Eve, Diana slipped out to the little shed where Nibs was kept. He whinnied when he heard her and nuzzled into her shoulders. She gave him a hug. I've just come to tell you that it's Christmas tomorrow, so I may be a bit late coming to feed you, she said. I'll have my stocking to look at, you see, and presents to undo. I'll bring you a present too. She felt about for the blanket. It had slipped off Nibs's back. She pulled it on again. It's rather thin and not very warm for you, she said. But one day I do promise I'll buy you a proper rug. Listen for Santa Claus tonight, Nibs. You may hear the bells on his reindeer when he comes driving through the sky. Now it was the most extraordinary thing, but that night Nibs did hear bells. Jingle, jingle, jingle. They came nearer and nearer. Jingle, jingle. They sounded so very near that Nibs really thought they must be in the garden. He looked out through the window into the moonlight. He saw a strange sight. A large reindeer sleigh was just outside his stable shed, and four big reindeer stood there, tossing their antlers in the moonlit night. A burly man in a long tunic and big black boots and hood got out of the sleigh and went to the front reindeer. Nibs felt very excited. Good gracious, this must be the person Diana had asked him to watch out for. And what were those queer creatures that pulled it? Were they the reindeer? Nibs had no idea what reindeer were. He peered out at the big animals and admired their grey antlers. He gave out a little whinny. He wanted to talk to those unexpected visitors. One of the reindeer heard him and turned his head. Nibs whinnied even more loudly. Then he got so excited that he pawed at his stable door, wishing he could get out. He whinnied very loudly indeed. Diana, who was asleep in bed, suddenly woke up. She sat up. What had awakened her? Then she heard Nibs' whinnying and was astonished. What's the matter with him, she thought. Is he ill? Oh dear, I do hope not. I'll go and see. She slipped on her woolly coat and her warm dressing gown and put on her slippers. Then she crept downstairs and opened the garden door. She ran across the grass and then behind the hedge where the stable shed was. She stopped in the greatest astonishment. There, in the moonlight, was the big sleigh and the four reindeer. And kneeling down by the front reindeer, feeling one of its forelegs, was Santa Claus himself. It must be. He looked exactly like his pictures. Diana stood still with a gasp of surprise and delight. In her garden just by Nibs's shed. No wonder he had whinnied and woke her up. What a very extraordinary thing. Oh, oh, please, said Diana with another little gasp. Is it really you, Santa Claus? Santa Claus looked up startled. He hadn't heard Diana coming. He stood up and gave her a very wide smile, and then he patted her curly head. Well, well, you're not supposed to see me. Come along, you know. You're supposed to be fast asleep in bed. Now, don't you tell anyone you've seen me. Oh, Santa Claus, I do hope I'm not dreaming, said Diana earnestly. Why have you come down in our garden? I thought you went up on the roof and got down chimneys. So I do, said Santa Claus. But you've got a television aerial up on your roof, and one of my reindeer didn't see it. It's hurt its leg rather badly, I'm afraid. I had to come down into the garden to have a look at it. Oh, dear, I am sorry, said Diana in dismay. I just never thought of television aerials getting in your way, Santa. Well, I'm not really used to looking out for them just yet, said Santa Claus. Sticking up out of the roofs everywhere. I shall really have to be careful. The thing is, I don't believe this reindeer is fit to take on my long journey tonight. He's lame already. Can you get another? asked Diana anxiously. No, I might get one at the zoo, but it's rather far away, said Santa Claus. 
Well, well, this is a to-do. On Christmas night, too, when I have so much to do. I suppose you haven't got a tame reindeer, have you? People do have such queer pets nowadays. No, I haven't, said Diana, and then a perfectly wonderful idea came into her head. But, oh, Santa Claus, I've got a pony. He's strong and can gallop as fast as any reindeer. He really can. I'll lend him to you for the night if you like. You can put your hurt reindeer into my pony stable, where he can have a good rest. Ooh, well, said Santa Claus doubtfully, well, I've never heard of using a horse before, I must say, but I don't see why I shouldn't. If he gallops fast, I can rub something on his hooves to make him able to go through the air. That's quite easy. I've a good mind to try him. Have you his harness anywhere about? Oh, yes, yes, in his shed, cried Diana, wild with excitement. Oh, Santa Claus, this is wonderful. What a thrill for Nibs. I'll get him at once. She ran to the shed and opened the door. Nibs trotted out at once, excited. Santa Claus had a look at him and liked him. Good, strong little fellow, he said. Beautifully groomed, too. You must look after him very well, I think. Come here, Nibs. You're going to help me pull my sleigh. Well, it wasn't long before the limping reindeer was put into Nibs' stable and shut up there to rest, and the little pony was harnessed to the sleigh. Santa Claus fixed bells to his reins, and he jingled as loudly as a reindeer. He tossed his head and poured the ground in delight. What an adventure! How he jingled! Where were they all going? Santa Claus lifted up each little hoof and rubbed something shiny on them all. That was to make Nibs able to gallop through the sky, of course. Then Santa Claus got onto his sleigh, leant back on the great sack of toys he had there, and cracked his whip. I'll put Nibs back into his stable and take out my reindeer when we come back, he called. Thank you very, very much. I'll be sure to fill your stocking full of my very nicest toys. And then, jingle, 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 the reindeer and the dear little pony sprang suddenly into the air. The sleigh tilted up with a jerk, and off they all went at top speed, high up over the roofs of all the houses nearby. Diana blinked in amazement. Why, this was better than anything she'd ever read in a book. Much, much more exciting. Nibs, her own pony Nibs, was helping the reindeer to pull Santa Claus's sleigh. No one would believe her if she told them. She could hardly believe it herself. She peeped into the stable and saw the reindeer standing quietly there, its hurt leg lifted up like a dog's lame leg. He shivered a little. Diana put the old blanket over him and stroked his long, velvety nose. You're all right, she said. Keep quiet and rest, reindeer. Then she slipped back to bed. She couldn't go to sleep for a very long time. She was listening and listening for Santa Claus to come back with Nibs. But he didn't come. And at last she fell asleep. She remembered a night adventure immediately when she woke in the morning, and her eyes shone. She looked at her stocking. It was full from top to toe. Santa Claus had been down their chimney, that was certain. But had she dreamt all that about the hurt reindeer and Nibs taking his place? It didn't seem that it could possibly be true now, and it was daytime. Surely things like that didn't really happen. I think I must have dreamt it all, said Diana with a sigh. Anyway, I shall never know if it's true, because the reindeer will be gone from the stable this morning, and Nibs will be back in his place, and he can't tell me if it was all true or not. She decided that she must have been dreaming. It was a pity, but it simply must have been a dream. Nibs couldn't go galloping through the sky. She had a lovely lot of presents and a very happy Christmas breakfast with more parcels by her plate. Then she got up and fetched her cord. I'm just going to see Nibs, she said. I want to give him his carrots and wish him happy Christmas. Out she went and ran to the stable shed. Nibs was there, waiting for her. He whinnied in delight when he saw the carrots. "'Nibs!' began Diana. "'I wish you a very—' "'Oh, Nibs! Where did you get that wonderful horse rug?' "'Nibs whinnied. On his back was a magnificent navy blue rug, bound with red. "'It was thick and warm. On the middle of it were embroidered two gold letters, S and C.' S.C., said Diana. Santa Claus. They're his initials. Oh, my goodness. He must have given you his rug to keep you warm after your long gallop, Nibs. You must have come in very hot, and he didn't think your thin old blanket was warm enough for you. Oh, Nibs. Nibs whinnied and nuzzled into Diana's neck. He'd had a wonderful adventure. The reindeer had been very, very nice to him. 
Santa Claus had told him he was just as fast as they were, and he had given him his own rug to keep him warm. What more could a horse want except a bunch of nice, munchy, crunchy carrots to eat on a Christmas morning? Diana brushed against Nibs's reins that were hanging nearby. They made a noise. Jingle, jingle. The little girl stared in delight. Oh, Santa Claus forgot to take off the bells, Nibs. He's left them on your reins, and I shan't take them off either. You shall jingle whenever you go out with me. So it wasn't a dream after all. It was all true. Diana was so excited and happy that she hardly knew what to do. She stroked the gold initials on the rug SC for Santa Claus. It really was very marvellous. She went back to the house at last, half wondering if she was still dreaming. She looked up at the roof. And what a surprise! The television aerial was not crooked. It was done when the reindeer caught his leg on it, thought Diana. Well, certainly I'm not dreaming, but would anyone believe me if I told them? <laughs> no, they wouldn't, so I shan't say a word. Nobody shall ever know. Well, I simply had to tell you, because it's much too nice a story never to be told, isn't it? And if Diana reads it, she won't mind. She'll feel so very, very proud of her little horse nibs.